Hey, welcome back to the channel. So back when blocks were very first introduced to WordPress, there were a lot of third-party packages to help you scaffold or, you know, sort of create like the skeleton for a block. Uh, but if you're anything like me, you don't want a community or third-party package. You want something that's officially put out by WordPress themselves. Well, good news, and I'm about four years late to the party, uh, but there is an official package. However, judging by the weekly downloads being only about 10,000, I'm not the only one that isn't aware of this package and how amazing it is. So consider this video like a public service announcement. I want to show you this package from the official WordPress team called Create Block. Now in this video, I want to show you how to use this package to accomplish three different things. So number one, how you can create a basic block that just saves the output like a static JavaScript string at the time of saving the post. Number two, how you can create a PHP powered block that dynamically generates the output. I'll give you a hint, this is almost always what I use. I almost never use this option. And then number three, how to use a block that's powered by the brand new Interactivity API. Cool, so let's jump into the action. I have this brand new, totally empty WordPress website. And imagine I wanna create a new plugin for a new block. So the first thing you would do is just open up the plugin directory in your terminal. So if you're like me and you're using local WP, you would just, well you could click go to site folder and then, you know, like drag. Uh, your plugins folder onto your terminal, or let's see, if you just click open site shell, cool, so that already puts me into the public folder, and then from there you could just go into like, you know, WP content, and then go into plugins, but anyways, from the plugins directory, we're just going to run this command, so it's npx at wordpress slash create dash block at the latest version, and then just make up a folder name, so like I'll call it like brad's block, go ahead and press enter, Cool, so it took less than a minute, and now in my plugins folder, I've got this folder, so you can open that up in VS Code. And then with that folder open, I just be sure to run an npm start, and that it's gonna watch in the background for anytime you save a change to a file. So then you would just go into your SRC folder, and there you have it. Now, I realize there's been packages like this from the very start, but what I think is cool is that this is officially from WordPress. Like this is the official WordPress tool, and it's amazing. So before we dig into the files, you would wanna go just first activate the plugin, right? So go into plugins, click activate, uh, and then let's go add it to a post. So like if I go into my first post, and if I search for, you know, yep, there it is, Brad's block, you can update that, and then just uh, go view it on the front end. Cool, there it is. So we see it both on the public front end and the Gutenberg editor side. And then to edit it, well, in the SRC folder, uh, you can just go into like edit.js, say hello from the editor, and maybe I'll have like, you know, 10 exclamations, hit save. It's gonna immediately get transpiled from JSX into something that's actually gonna work. And if you refresh on the admin side, perfect. And then because this is a static block, I'm pretty sure we'd run into a validation error if we changed the output, but let's just go ahead and do it. So if you went into like save.js, you could say like hello from the saved content and change that to have like 10 exclamations, hit save. Now we're probably gonna get a validation error if you refresh, but you could just pretend like you deleted the block and reinserted it, click recovery, click update, refresh, awesome. Now, let's jump back to the to-do list for this lesson. Because I told you that personally, I almost never just create a basic block like that. In my opinion, these types of basic blocks are borderline useless. I don't even think they should exist. I think every single block in the history of WordPress should be a dynamic block. So now, let me show you how to use this tool uh, to create a dynamic block. So, let's go back to our command line where uh, it's pointing towards the plugins folder. And if you want a dynamic block that's powered by PHP, just say npx, at symbol WordPress. So I'm just gonna create a totally different folder, a totally different plugin, uh, but you know, create dash block at the latest version. Uh, let's call it like Brad's dynamic block and then dash dash variant dynamic. Go ahead and press enter. Whoops, it helps if you spell variant correctly. So, cool, let's run that again. Okay, so that finished. Now in my plugins folder, I have this new, you know, Brad's dynamic block. So let's open that up in VS Code. Behind the scenes, you could stop the other task, but in this folder, I'd be sure to start up npm start. What that does is it's always gonna copy your files from the SRC folder to the, oops, to the build folder every time uh, you hit save. Anyways, let's go activate this plugin, right? So plugins, there it is, Brad's dynamic block. Let's activate it. Let's go back to this blog post. And now if I try to, you know, let's see, yep. 
Brad's dynamic block, you can insert that, click update, and you can refresh the front end. But what's cool is now we we don't have to worry about like block validation. So um, without even needing to resave the post, we are free if you just in your SRC folder go into render.php. So th I think every block in the history of the world should indeed be powered by a render.php file. Frankly, I'm not comfortable using a block across, you know, a hundred different blog posts or a hundred different pages if the output isn't dynamic. Otherwise, it just seems like you're setting yourself up for a lot of manually, you know, going through posts and updating later on. Anyways, now from this file, you can output whatever you want, right? So from a dynamic block, I mean, you could add 20 exclamations, hit save, refresh, you get the idea. Cool, so that's the way that I prefer to create blocks is using that dynamic variant. All right, and then finally, before we bring this lesson to a close, I wanna show you how to create a block that's powered by the new interactivity API in WordPress. Now we could create an entirely separate folder and like a new block or a new plugin, uh, but let us let me show you how to actually just convert this one that we were just working on into an interactivity API powered block. There's just three quick changes we would need to make. So number one, go into the SRC folder and jump into the block.json file. And we just need to make sure that we have this supports property and we don't want HTML false. Instead, inside of that object, we want a property of, you know, quotes, interactivity, and then give it a value of true. So you can go ahead and hit save. The other thing you need to do is go into your package.json and in the scripts area, both for the build and the start task, get rid of the dash dash webpack copy PHP and instead we want dash dash experimental dash modules. And then we want that exact same flag for the start task. Go down here, get rid of webpack copy and instead have dash dash experimental modules. We can save that. And then there's just one last change we need to make. So just jump back into block.json. I, I should have shown you this 10 seconds ago, but down at the bottom of block.json, instead of view script, we need this property to be named view script module. Let's go ahead and hit save. And now I'm not sure if it's necessary. You might need to restart your npm start command in the command line. Let me try without restarting it to let you know if it works. Uh, if it doesn't work, then I probably just need to restart that. Uh, but at this point, let's go into the SRC folders view.js and let me do this. Let's say, and actually let's start at the very top of this file. I need to import something. So let's import, uh, create the brackets, store from, and then it's just quotes at symbol WordPress slash interactivity. Cool. Now let's go use store down at the bottom here. So let's say, uh, call the store function. We're going to give it two things. So a comma B, the first thing is the namespace for this block. So it's create dash block. You could change the namespace if you wanted to, but, uh, this is the default value when you use this package. And then the second thing we give it is a configuration object. Now this video is not about understanding or learning the interactivity API. Uh, if you're interested in learning about that, check out, I'll include a link down in the description, but check out my other video uh, earlier this week all about the interactivity API. This video assumes that you already know the basics, uh, but let's just have an action. So, excuse me, plural actions. And then inside it, let's just have an action or a function called like test. So, you know, arrow symbol, uh, just a arrow function. And let's just have it like an annoying alert that says, wow, let's give that a save. And now let's try to use this from our front end. So you would just go into render.php and in the dynamic output, let's have it just be wrapped in like an overall div. And I'll move this content inside there. Technically, I mean, this doesn't matter. It's all just personal preference, but imagine I wanted like a button that says, click me and in order to use that action, you, you want the wrapper div to sort of subscribe to that store or become a part of that store or have access to that store. So on the opening div tag, we would just say data dash WP interactive, and then you include that matching namespace. So it's create dash block. And really that's all we need. Now, anything that lives inside this div has access to that interactivity API data. So check this out on the button. We can say uh, like, data dash WP on dash dash click. So, you know, that's the specific event we're watching for equals quotes. And then we can just say actions dot and we named our action test. So let's save that. Uh, make sure you have NPM your task running in the command line, but let's refresh and see what we get. All right. It did not work. I have an error in the command line. So maybe you do need to start your task and stop or stop it and start it up again. So I'll say NPM start. All right. Let's see if it works this time. So 
I'll hit save just one more time to trigger a fresh rebuild. And then uh, let's refresh the front end, click on click me. Perfect, it works beautifully. Now again, this video was not about teaching you the interactivity API. You can go watch, uh, I think it's over an hour or two hours long. I posted it on my channel just about a week ago. So you can go learn all about the exciting new interactivity API. Anyways, that's gonna bring this video to a close. Just a bit of a public service announcement that this package is amazing. Now, you might be wondering, what if I don't want to create a plugin for each block? Like, what if I want to create a block theme and I want to have like 30 different blocks inside of one theme? Well, that's a great question. Uh, maybe next week I'm going to create another video here on my channel that explains exactly how I would accomplish that. Now, before we bring this lesson to a close, I do have a bit of a plug for my own product. Um, it's called Learn Web Code Premium. You'll find a link to join it down in the description of this video, but essentially it comes with my five most helpful courses. It also comes with access to a private Discord chat community. And really quick, the five courses that are included, uh, my 2024 bootcamp course, where you go from Figma to full stack, Laravel, MySQL, WordPress, and React. Also, uh, any future courses I create will get added to this bundle and they'll be added to your account at no additional cost when those new courses launch. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more web development tutorials.